Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is GGF bringing you episode 10. We're now in double digits and definitely into the official game. Episode 10 of Let's Try Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Boom. Let's go, son. All right. We're going to get right into this. We're in, in the underground caves of Canabras, underneath Canabras. If you're over encumbered and not on a random encounter map, you can drop some items to pick them up later. All right, let's get right into it, guys. We've got our three-person party, and look who it is. Who's there? The fine apparel of this young half-elf woman is torn and stained with blood, dust, and dirt. However, she holds herself with such dignity that you would be forgiven for thinking you were at a high society party and not in the dank catacombs under the city. Her fingers grip her rapier hilt with a confidence, ready to draw it at a moment's notice. At her feet lies a dead body, so mutilated that at first glance it's hard to, hard to tell if it's animal or human. Relax, friend. We're, we're not demons or cultists. Don't poke my eye out with that thing, all right? <laughs> we fell down here during the attack. I'm Sila, that's Anevia, and this is our new friend. We're looking for a way back to the surface. Really? I am so ever glad to hear it. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Camellia. I was also in the square when... When... I can scarcely believe it. How did all those demons get into the city? I thought... Naively, it now seems. That the Wardstone protected us from attack. And Terendalev... I can't wrap my head around it. Camellia looks a lot like a girl. I was very close with back in the day. Uh, the girl relaxes slightly, but she keeps her hand on her sheathed weapon. Her self-control falters for a moment, and you glimpse the fear beneath her mask of perfect placidity. She licks her lips nervously. Okay. Not many could withstand a strike from a demon lord, not even Terendalev. I can't argue with that. We're fortunate to be alive, albeit underground. Daskari himself has come to Canabras. There's no mistaking that ugly mug. Tarandalev tried to fight him, but what could she do against a near deity? Even the Wardstone was no help. Our city used to be protected by powerful forces, but now... Anevia shakes her head. I love that there's... Three women so far as party members. That's awesome. We've seen how powerless they truly are. Henceforth, we shall have no one but ourselves to rely on, I suppose. Camellia finishes Anevia's thought with ruthless precision. Um, tell me more about yourself. Who am I? Just an ordinary citizen who decided to take a stroll through the square on the day of the festival. But that's not what you wish to know, is it? You most likely wish to know whether I'll be a burden should you ask me to join your group. No need to worry about that. I can assure you that I am skilled with a rapier. And I also possess some knowledge of magic. Is she a half-elven magus? <laughs> Just like me. The girl gives an elegant shrug. She touches the polished snake skull amulet that hangs around her neck. Mm, what happened to this poor man? Who is he? I don't know. He must have been in the square when disaster struck. I tried to revive him, but he was already dead, sadly. Mm. He didn't get these wounds from the fall. Be on your guard. Whatever killed him likely hasn't gone far. Sila's eyes warily scanned the area. Hang on. I think I know him. His name's Aravashniel, the oh. egghead from the library. He was a good lad, even if he was kind of stuck up. May his soul rest in peace. Anevia appears at the dead man's face. Um, do you want to join us? Certainly. Survivors should stick together. It's only sensible. Who knows what else could be prowling about in these caves? Okay, cool. We need to keep moving. There must be a way back to the surface somewhere around here. That's right. It would be the height of foolishness to survive a demon attack only to perish under a pile of rubble. <laughs> Let's see if this poor bloke has anything useful on him. Not to sound like a heartless brigand or nothing, but we kind of need all the supplies we can get right now. 125 XP? Oh, we're paused. Using abilities. 
Companion Camellia has the ability to cure light wounds. To use it, click the Companion Camellia's portrait. Click the icon with the spell Cure Light Wounds in the action bar. Click the left mouse button on the Companion Camellia's portrait to heal her. Healing restores lost hit points. Okay, so she's actually hurt. Open your heart to me. Um. Okay, we'll see what she can do. Oh, she's got some weird stuff. She seems to be a Magus, but way different than than me. Oh, spell book, right? She has guidance, light. We'll get into this in a second, guys. What the heck? It said abilities, right? What's on your mind? I wonder. Treat affliction? She has cure light wounds? Oh, she has a potion of cure light wounds. Was I not paying close enough attention? I thought it said she had the ability. Huh. All right, let's uh hit C and check it out. She's a blue blood camellia, a spirit hunter. Most shamans, oh, she's a shaman, seek spirits to learn from them. Spirit hunters pursue them to eliminate. Some of these loners are on a quest to rid the world of evil spirits and restless ghosts. Others fight spirits to gain more power. And some join the wars spirits wage amongst themselves, no matter how mysterious and inscrutable for a mortal's mind these could be. Spirit hunters learn to enchant their weapons so it could harm the incorporeal enemies as easily as mortal flesh. Her story. Blue blood. Camellia has both youth and talent in her favor. She tirelessly fights demons and cultists alike, but prefers to keep her distance from her fellow warriors. It's hard to tell if this is the arrogance inherent to some people of noble birth, or if she has another reason for keeping her companions at arm's length. She looks a lot like her. <laughs> Alright, let's check it out. So, lots of trickery. Wow. Tons of it. Some perception. Very nice. Um... Let's keep looking. So shamans do have some melee. She's got a plus five attack bonus. She's undetectable. Oh, her alignment is undetectable. That means it cannot be determined for unknown reasons. Usually this indicates that the character is enchanted or possesses an enchanted item that interferes with the deter determination of the alignment. She's wise, crazy dex. Very nice. And Spirit Hunter, um, 1d6 damage. She's got a Buckler. Let's look at her abilities. She is a half elf. She's of the Green Faith, a naturalistic philosophy based on the belief natural forces are worthy of attention and respect. Followers of the Green Faith meditate daily, commune with natural forms of power, and show respect to nature in all things. Animal, earth, fire, plant, water, and her favorite weapon is the sickle. She has an object bond. A bonded object can be used once per day to restore any one spell that the shaman had prepared for this day. Battle spirit. A shaman surrounds herself with the spirit of battle. Allies within 30 feet of the shaman, including the shaman, receive a plus one morale bonus on attack and damage rolls. With their weapon at 8th level and 16th level, these bonuses increase by one. The shaman can use this ability for a number of rounds per day equal to three plus her charisma modifier. These rounds do not need to be consecutive, so right now that would be four rounds. She's a courtier, adds persuasion and trickery to the list of her class skills. She also becomes proficient with rapiers and bucklers. If the character already has the class skill, weapon proficiency, or armor proficiency... Oh, right. Um, rapiers and bucklers. So I'm actually not sure. We'll see. She has the proficiency, proficiency rapier. Oh, so she would get a plus one to Rapier then because um, she has Elven Immunities, Keen Senses. Uh, skill Focus of Trickery. Get a plus three on all checks involving Trickery. Because she has Adaptability, Buckler Proficiency. Rapier proficiency, she can charge, demoralize, acrobatics, fighting defensively, treat affliction, coup de grace, spirit weapon, enchantment. 
at first level. A Spirit Hunter can as a swift action. Grant a plus one enhancement bonus for one minute to any weapon she's holding. Every four levels beyond first, the weapon gains another plus one, max plus five at 17th level. These bonuses can be added to the weapon, stacking with existing weapon enhancement to a max of plus five. Multiple uses of this ability do not stack. At first level, the bonus can be used to add Ghost Touch special ability to the weapon. At fifth level, the bonuses can be used to add Flaming, Frost, Keen Shock, or Speed. Um, adding these properties consumes an amount of bonus equal to the property's base price modifier. I don't understand what that means, but... These special abilities are added to any the weapon already has, but duplicates do not stack. If the weapon's not magical, you need a plus one enhancement bonus before any other special abilities can be added. These bonuses and special abilities are decided when the ability is used, cannot be changed till the next time the spirit hunter uses the abilities. And they don't function on any other weapon. Anyone other than the spirit hunter can only enhance one weapon at a time. And can use be used a number of times per day equal to half the spirit level hunter plus her wisdom mod so four times pretty nice ghost touch the spirit hunter can add the ghost touch property to a weapon but this consumes one point of enhancement bonus granted to the weapon what does that mean oh she has four rounds of bonus and it, it takes a plus one i don't know a ghost touch weapon deals damage normally against incorporeal creatures regardless of its bonus. An incorporeal creature's 50% reduction in damage from corporeal sources does not apply to attacks made against it with ghost touch weapons. But you can inspire rage except effect. Light armor, medium armor, simple weapon proficiency, weapon finesse. Wow. So with a light weapon, elven curve blade, east stock, or rapier, um... I lost my track. Oh, made it made for a creature of your size category. You may use your dex modifier instead of your strength modifier on attack rolls. Keen senses plus two racial bonus on perception checks. Elven immunities immune to magic sleep. Gain plus two bonus to saving throws against enchantments, spells, and effects. Marshall, um, let's see if we can see. I guess rapier. Wait a minute, since Rapier is a simple weapon, she gets a weapon proficiency with it? No, it's not a simple weapon, but she can also use it. Pretty nice stuff here. Um, initiative plus four. Class, she is a shaman spirit hunter. And a biography, we don't know her. Um, alignment wow she's got a whole lot of spells her spell penetration is one plus four concentration she only has enlarged person spirit magic slot and then two cure light wounds oh she does have it I was looking for the wrong uh, icon So, huh. Well, one second, guys. Ah. Bear with me for a second, guys. Um. We should look at these spells just to see what we'll want to memorize next time. Cure Light Wounds is certainly nice to have as the shaman. But I forgot the shamans can melee a bit. I almost thought about being one for that very reason. So let's go through the spells, guys. I know, like I said, it's a lot of reading early on and not a ton of gameplay. I hope you guys don't hate me for that. But, you know, I do want to be thorough in, you know, um, check everything out. S excuse me, SB Battle. A shaman who selects the battle spirit gains scars from every wound she takes and the grit of battle always seems to cling on her body. When she calls upon one of the spirit's abilities, she grows in stature, becoming taller and more muscular with a grimace of rage stretching across her face. Wow. So that's battle spirit, I guess. Huh. So a large person. 
actually next time when we rest, we'll probably check this out. I don't want to, I want to get to some gameplay here. It's been a minute. Um, she's wearing a chain shirt, 20 arcane spell failure. She's got the bone amulet, mystical amulet in the shape of a snake made from bone. The pendant is a snake skull. The enchantments on this amulet allow the wearer to conceal their alignment. Interesting. Uh, cold iron rapier and a buckler and she's got the cure light wounds potion and potion of the large person I guess we can give her an ever burning torch and um, let's see what are we going to do here uh, exit out pause let's control A everybody move right here let's get a formation laid down here um, Sila, horse, camellia, camellia. Let's just switch horse for camellia there. Oh, and I'm using melee too with the cold iron rapier. I'm gonna switch to ranged for for a bit. Everyone counts on me. Um, I know there's another way to switch weapons. Oh, I didn't go back and look at what <laughs> what um it takes to, to switch weapons. Let's also do the formation and I'll stand back even further. Uh, let's have her no. cast. There's Cure Light Wound. No, that's Divine Zap. Oh, level one. No? Yeah, there it is. She can object bond it to restore a cast of the spell. Okay, let's just cast it on herself. We get to see a spell in action. Oh, this, the spell effects are gorgeous. I did not realize the level of graphics this has just yet. He's got a masterwork dagger. Um, masterwork weapon is finely crafted version of a normal weapon. Wielding it provides a plus one enhanced bonus on attack rolls. We'll just collect it all. And, uh, let's move out. <laughs> I like that we have our horse. Nevia, you good back there? Or Nevia? Lighting. All right, let's do that. In dark places such as caves, it's hard to see anything. There are two main ways to light your path. The first is to cast a light spell on a character walking in front of the party. The second is to give one of the characters the ever-burning torch to carry, right? So let's have Camellia. the voice of the spirits. She's using a buckler, so best bet would be I me to cast. Flare? No. Do I not have light? There it is. Let's cast it on our horse. <laughs> oh, the spell is gorgeous sun the lighting is nice too i'm not the biggest like graphics person but this is beautiful young giant centipede i'll cut you wide open wait back up get behind Save the last oh. one for me combat when combat begins the game is paused the pause is convenient to give orders to your characters press space Switch between turn based in real time. Press T. Your enemies are highlighted in red and your allies in green. A stippled, stippled line connects a character to their current target. A timer over your character's head counts down the time until the next round and depicts the character's current scheduled action. Oh my gosh. That is awesome. Okay, so actually, guys, let's come back here. Um, get information. Whoa. Oh, I hit one. Okay, let me keep firing on them. Uh, Sila, what can she do? Smite evil. Fight defensively. Camellia. No really need to call Battle Spirit or do anything crazy, I don't think. Use a cantrip maybe from back here. To 
Divine Zap. Within close range, you unleash your divine powers against a single target. The target takes 1d3 points of divine damage. A successful save halves the damage. Dismiss spell, daze, resistance, stabilize. Alright, let's cast a little divine zap. Let's let them come to it. Whoa! Oh, there's four of them. Yikes. Okay. Let's have Camellia cast a zap there. Seal is going to attack. Anevi is attacking. Beautiful. Critical hit of one. The horse went down. Did they? Oh, the horse went down. The young centipede dies. Did the horse die? Horse got rocked really quick. It's just knocked out for now, probably. It's not a normal party member. Um, okay, you guys are fighting. Boom. All right. Nice. Come on, horsey. All right, he's fine. So the horse, can we see C on the horse? They don't seem to act the same like they did in Kingmaker. They are less... Less involved, less of a being. Honestly, the road awaits. All you can really do with the horse is saddle up. I thought, huh? All right, let's saddle up. All right, I can shoot from ranged, I guess. Quick save. Any loot? There's someone down up here. Alright, he's got a bottle of oil, an item of interest, interest to a craftsman or a collector. A merchant would pay well for it. Gold coin, the universal currency of Galarian. Padded armor. Light armor padded. Alright, so let's go to our buddy Elzarian, who's only got a plus two with this. What is he swinging that cold iron rapier with? Plus two attack, yeah, not too great. Definitely, I mean, as I said, I don't min-max, but I hope I also did it, you know, really muck it up. Um, he's got, oh, he's got studded leather, which is light. So, he can wear light armor just fine. That's a one instead of a three, so don't want to use it, I don't think. Right, let's move forward. Actually, let's do the formation a little bit. For some reason, like, it's not adjusting the formation properly. Follow my steps. There we go, it's a little better. Here we have some loot. Another Terendolive scale. And we've got a giant fly. The spirits demand your blood. Hey, you're gonna get in range and shoot it. Whoa, bro. You're building a crossbow. Back up. Okay, he's got it aligned to it. There you go. Boom. Ooh, 14 sneak attack from Anevia. Let's head out. Huh. We can go up or further down, it looks like. A giant centipede. A spinning giant centipede. Our duty calls. Whoops. Why can't I pick Alzari? Oh. Let us bide our time. Shoot the spinning one. Missed. Now 
another spitting one. Um, can I command you? Where is she? Oh, she's already. She's like a little bugged. Oh, dang. Six damage. Nice. Quick saving after every battle, so <laughs> see any loot. Oh, another dead person. Wow, 25 gold coins, eight braces of armor plus one. These braces grant their wear an armor bonus of one, just as though they were wearing armor. Like most bonuses, an armor bonus does not stack with armor bonuses from different sources, such as bonuses from wearing armor or from mage armor spell. Two potions of cure light wounds, a light mace, and a scroll of inflict light wounds. Mm, a necromantic scroll. All right, let's sort this out a little bit. We should probably give Sila. She's got a potion of shield faith. Um, how do we split these? Hold shift. Yeah. Give her a potion. Camellia has a potion. Give her a second one. He's mounted. Um, potion or can't be used by Sila. Camellia can be used can use it and I can't for some reason. It's available to Camellia. Let's check out scroll of inflict light wounds. Will saving throw to have the damage. It does use spell resist standard action. It's within touch range. Oh, I wonder if I can use that with my... No, I can't use it at all. One charge, 11 DC. When laying your hand upon a creature, you channel negative energy that deals 1d8 points of damage plus 1 point per cast to level max plus 5. Since undead are powered by negative energy, this spell cures such a creature of a like amount of damage rather than harming it. We'll give it to Camellia just to hang on to. And the Braces of Armor... I don't think this is going to do anything for her. Nope. Oh, they actually show up, which is awesome. <clears throat> um. I, I don't actually have any arcane spell failure from that, right? Like, uh... Yeah, my character is not going to be that great, but neither was my Kingmaker character, so. Hmm. I don't see anywhere where it's listed as Arcane Spell Failure. Hopefully we get more powerful as time goes on then. But, um... Yeah, I don't, I don't like to min-max or power play or anything like that. Just like to have fun with sort of a... Just Let a regular... This sounds cool, let's take it type character. Alright, let's come up here. Why am I in the lead? There we go. Tread lightly. Oh, got a giant fly. Do not fear! Do not waver! Um, ah, spitters. Let me aim at the spitter. Oh, I got it. Nice. The Nebia. Almost five damage. This is a beautifully polished and smooth experience thus far. We've got some bones. With a rainbow quartz, this reagent can be used to brew potions or scribe scrolls. Flame tongue, this is a cooking ingredient. You can use it to cook something while resting. So I don't think we really need to rest yet, but let's I cast. Shall not fail. 
light again on Sila. Oh wait, light. Ten minutes per level, it was still affecting us, but okay. Monitor lizard. Forwards. Be careful, everyone. Oh, this is a pretty tough thing. Let's have her, Sila, fight defensively. Choose to take a minus four in attack rolls to gain a plus two dodge. Ever fight defensively. Why am I all up in its grill? Oh, we got it. Right, she doesn't have to fight defensively anymore. Oh, there's loot on it. A monitor lizard scale, an item of interest to a craftsman or collector. Merchant would pay well for it. Oh, skin. Skinning failed. Darn. I didn't know it'd be a skill check, but it makes sense. Oh, there's someone over there. And it looks like we're going getting into a ruin or something. Okay. So far, so good. No, I can't just walk away. It's got to be here somewhere. You struggle to make out the man's features in the gloom. As soon as he steps into the circle of light, however, you realize that you have never encountered a creature like this before. The stranger looks like the work of a vivisectionist who attempted to stitch together a lizard and a man. When do I? The man notices you and freezes. The curling horn protruding from his head casts a malevolent shadow on the cave wall. What the heck? Lan, did you find it? Who is that? The woman, she's got a spider on her back? Or she is a spider? The woman looks just as strange as her companion, like a cross between a cat and a spider. When she catches sight of you, she immediately drops into a fighting stance. Her movements reveal the lethal grace of a wild predator. The do-gooders here to save our mongrel souls, no doubt. Wait, they might know what's going on up there. Land stops her with a gesture. Um. We'll tell him demons are laying waste to Canabras. If things are as bad as you say, then we all have to hurry. Land's expression hardens. You didn't come from the direction of the shield maze. Damn it. I couldn't care less about what's happening on the surface, but the maze. Wendewog looks you over, considering something. I realize that you guys have your own troubles, but we need to be in Canabras. People are dying up there. Please, show us the way out. Oh cool, they're potential companions. Who are you, tieflings? Tieflings are the descendants of people who sullied themselves by mating with demons. Our ancestors would never sink that low. <laughs> we are the underground crusaders, the children of the crusade's finest. Oh wow, when Duog's face twists scornfully. Sadly, underground crusaders is a bit of a mouthful, so people usually just call us mongrels. Huh. You just love repeating that, don't you, Lan? Mongrels. That's what the Uplanders call us. But we call ourselves Neethers. Neethers. Windwog lets out a disdainful huff. No matter what you call us, it's not gonna stop our horns, hooves, or tails from growing. Uh, I've never heard of Underground Crusaders before. In Canabras, they're called Mongrels. 
People say that they come up to the surface at night and eat anyone foolish enough to wander alone after midnight. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I thought you guys were just a tale to tell kids at night. <laughs> Sila turns to Lan and Windwalk. Huh. That's human gratitude for you. Our forefathers suffered the consequences of demonic corruption, all to protect Mendev and Golarion. And for what? So we could become monsters used to frighten children. Windwa gives a contemptuous snort. Mendev, the nation of Mendev, is a land defined by its conflict with abyssal forces unheard of anywhere else on Galarian. The people of this beleaguered land are locked in a constant struggle with the world wound, the, dem the demonic rift that lies beyond its western border. Galarian. The planet Galarian orbits a yellow sun in the far reaches of the material plane. Third of eleven in orbit, this blue planet contains vast oceans and lush green lands, and is the perfect environment for countless cultures. Indeed, Galarian is the most populous planet in its solar system. Its innately hospitable and life-sustaining environment is presumably the work of the gods, so astronomers sometimes refer to Galarian as the child. Astronomers of other planets, however, often refer to Galarian as the cage, in reference to its cosmic role as the prison of the mad god Rovagug, who lies bound at the world's core. Every mongrel has their own take on it. Our chief, for example, thinks of us as something like a reserve military force. He thinks we're standing by until the moment we're needed, and when we emerge on the surface and save the day, all the people will see how good we are and they'll love us for it. Yeah, he leaves that last part out when he talks about it, of course, but it's easy enough to read between the lines. <laughs> Land size. Uh, what is this place? This is the hall where we remember the glory of our forebears. Sorry about the mess. Uh, it doesn't usually look like this, trust me. Sometimes we even wipe the dust off the exhibits. Huh. This is where the relics of the First Crusaders are displayed. Our lives are short, our glories are quickly forgotten, but this place helps us to remember that we are just as worthy as anyone else, and that our lives are not lived in vain. Oh, that's cool. Oh, the first crusaders? You've been down here that long? That's crazy. And Nevia lets out a low whistle. What are you doing here? None of your bit. We're looking for a holy sword. It was here, in the center, sticking out of a rock. The sooner we find it, the better. Some kids from our tribe took off for the shield maze. They figured it had collapsed, and now it's their time to go up to the surface, like all the legends foretold. Wow, land frowns. Except they don't have a clue what's waiting for them up there. They're not fighters. And Sul, the chief of our tribe, is dead set against it. He says that now isn't the time for the underground crusaders to take up arms. If we get the holy sword, we might be able to change the chief's mind. Huh. Sorry if I've been breathing into the mic, guys. I just realized it now. It shifted in a bit. It's a fool's errand. None of us will be able to hold the sword, let alone use it to save anyone. It's not an ordinary weapon. It's made from righteous heavenly flame and will burn anyone who touches it. Wow. Do you think you're special, Lan? When do I cough a breath? Heavenly? Heaven is a plane in the outer sphere, a realm of pure righteousness where the forces of good gather to aid those on less virtuous planes and help worthy souls find rest. Though inconceivably large, it appears to most viewers as a mountain with a mysteriously floating peak. Heaven residents see law and goodness as largely the same force. Order is the greatest good, and goodness is the greatest order. They recognize the good intentions of the Azadas of Elysium, but view them as misguided children. Similar, similarly, they oppose the lawful evil forces of hell, but credit them with intelligence and believe that they can at least be reasoned into truces and stalemates, and perhaps even redeemed. I'll pick it up with my teeth and tie it to my hand if I have to. <laughs> it doesn't matter. 
An angel's sword and a troop of stalwart mongrels will be able to work a minor miracle. Chuckles. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, you're still here, Wendu, which means that deep down, you know it's possible. <laughs> Wendu Wog shrugs and turns away. Wow. Maze, does it really lead to the surface? Yes. There are other ways up, but they are far from here. And after the earthquakes, there's a good chance they've collapsed. But the maze... There's a legend among our people that when the walls of the maze fall, that will be a signal for us, the underground crusaders. That the time has come to go up to the surface and fight the demons in the final confrontation. When do I snorts? Until then, the people say the maze is shielding us from taking rash actions. I'm the only one in our whole tribe to have been in the maze. And even I don't know if it's true. Huh. But the further I went in the maze, the fresher the air became. Oh. That means that it really must lead to the surface. When the ceiling and walls started shaking, the young ones in our tribe lost their heads. They figured the maze was going to collapse, so it was time to go up to the surface. They grabbed whatever weapons were on hand and ran off toward the maze. Oh no. They think the maze is no longer a danger to them. They've been listening to Wendwog too much. His eyes are filled with genuine concern. Don't try to blame this on me. Yes, I told them that our people are capable of making our way through the maze. In the future. But I always told them to wait until I had made a map of all the maze's dangers. I warned them a hundred times. But it was no use. My words just went in one ear and out the other. You hear a hint of emotion in Winduog's voice for the first time. A sword of holy flame, how did it wind up down here? It came here with its owner. A long time ago. 50,000 gongs to be precise. Hmm. 70 years ago, in Uplander time. Oh. 50,000 gongs ago, our <laughs> forebears found a dead angel here, along with the bodies of his comrades. Wow. The tribe gave them a dignified burial, and they were laid to rest with their weapons. But the flaming angelic sword was stuck in a rock, and no one was able to pull it out. Huh. It burned to the touch, like real fire. So the rock was placed over the angel's grave. It should be here somewhere. Huh. Pretty interesting already, guys. What do you think? One second, bear with me, please. Um, let's see what the angels are. I mean, we pretty much know, but, um... Angels are a group of altruistic celestials native to all three upper planes, Nirvana, Heaven, and Elysium. Or Elysium. They represent all the multiple interpretations of goodness. The eldest angels were one of the first creations of the primordial, primordial deities of good, making them one of the oldest races in the great beyond, and were trained as celestial guardians and servants from birth. Most serve their creators to this day. Most angels in modern times come from ascended good mortal souls rather than direct divine creation. Sometimes these souls even retain aspects of their mortal forms. And when do our rewards land with an irritated gla glare? Maybe the angel will dig himself out and find the sword for us. <laughs> that might be our best shot in this chaos. <laughs> Len, watch your tongue. Hmm. We'll find the sword faster if we work together. I'll help you. Thanks. An extra pair of eyes can only help. The sword will be easy enough to spot. It looks, uh, swordy. Help us, and in return, we'll get you out of here. Land's expression brightens. <laughs> now we're talking. Let's get to work. It's a good thing we all bumped into each other, isn't it? Indeed. What? You want to find the sword quickly so the underground monsters bring you back to the surface. So be it. 
right. New quest. All right. Oh, this is interesting. Some in hidden objects, some interactive objects aren't easy to find. When moving past such an object, each character automatically makes a perception skill check. If the check is successful, the object is found and highlighted to draw your attention to it. You can now interact with it. Awesome. Let's quick save and hit J. Check our journal. Um, the more people who pitch in to help look for the sword in the collapsed cave, the sooner the mongrels will show the way back to the surface. Okay. Unfortunately, I did not sample the special festival drink. Um, these are two... Oh, they're not official characters. They didn't join. Found um, anything? Um, well, better keep searching. Land on silently. Alright, let's take a look. Lore of Relig Religion 17 DC. So, will this automatically pick the best person for the job? It looks like it, yep. This one was beyond me. Statue of an unknown knight. The technique is crude, but the figure was clearly... Oops. Clearly crafted with genuine feeling. But she failed to check. Uh, we can check the loot, though. We've got another flame tongue and two edible moss. This is a cooking ingredient. You can use it to cook something while resting. No need to rest yet. Um... Follow my steps. Oh. Elzarian perception succeeded. That's weird. Five grinding stones, an item of interest to a craftsman or collector. A merchant would pay well for it. Looks like they're each, each worth two for a total of ten. That's the coins down there. Now, what is that? More loot. Two handful of gems. Merchant would pay well for it. Um, this room looks like an improvised museum or perhaps some kind of temple. Let's head out. What do we have here? Camellia picked that one out. And got a copper ring. Worth three gold. It can be equipped though. Not that it does anything in particular. Now, Reception checks that? failed. But Camellia's succeeded, but we must have failed on another one back here somewhere. That Elzarin did not, three grinding stones, did not uh, participate in yet. Nope, has failed too. So if we fail, if all three of us fail on one, I don't think we Let can retry that check. There's rubble, that's a skill check. Sila found a handful of gems and a grinding stone. What's that there? Sila again. Oh, there it is. Dang, son, let's go, son. Whoa, day fifteen, month Arotus, the eighth month, year forty-seven fifteen. A strange flash pierces the gloom and Elzarian feels drops of searing blood run down his chest. The wound healed by Terendalev reopens and weeps scarlet, but there is no pain or weakness. A hazy scene appears, a cave chamber. This one or another one entirely? Elzarian's heartbeat quickens and a stream of thoughts suddenly bursts into his mind. Thoughts that clearly belong to another. Treachery, they betrayed me, trapped me, and stabbed me in the back. My trusted allies, my treasured friends, the people I swore to protect, the people for whom I descended from heaven and came to this turbulent mortal world. There they are, up ahead in the gloom of the cave. What are they waiting for? Are they afraid to draw any closer? Do they believe I am about to die from their traitorous blows? Next to me, a quiet moan. A girl with a golden braid lies on the rocks, clutching her slashed side. She refuses to join with the traitors and pay dearly for it. I could have tried to run, but I will not. Whilst I have strength, 
Whilst, whilst I still have strength, I must... While recognizing the foreign origin of these thoughts, Elzarian intuits that he can control them somehow. Let's try to... Heal the wounded girl or furiously call out the traitors. Let's heal the wounded girl. A spark of healing magic illuminates the eerie murky scene before Elzarian. The wounded girl opens her eyes and whispers, Lario, you... You said that everything was going to change soon. You said you and the other warriors of heaven would be leaving us on a grand mission to stop the demons forever. Is that true? The frenzy of foreign thoughts comes faster and faster like a rushing river, and images flash by one after another. A priestess in colorful robes observing the stars, a young female paladin praying, clutching her glowing sword. A majestic golden-winged angel gazing into the distance, his face covered by a helmet but his voice ringing clear. Only if you're willing and only if you're ready, there is no going back. Then don't waste your strength healing me, the girl whispers. Your mission is more important. You take care. It is near. There in the vision, the darkness in the cave stirs into motion. Something massive appears from within its depths, a vague shadow, an outline. A nightmare come to life. A wave of odious chirruping and rustling whoops, emanates from the shadow. Chirruping and rustling. Uh, the sound piercing like hot irons lancing through flesh and bone. The traitors fall to their knees before the shadow in reverent ecstasy and the wounded girl thrashes in her death throes. The yawning chest wound burns white hot, Alzarian's head pounds with pain, and it's no longer clear whose pain it is. The person called Lariel who sent this vision, or one of the unlucky enough to receive it. Okay, willpower 10, though Alzarian is determined to fight off the illusion, knowledge arcana 10, but Alzarian knows how to resist malign influence such as this, no matter its origin. Yeah, we have a bonus of 9, so we only need to roll 1 on a d20 to pass this, so... Pretty cool, let's do that. Succeeded. The force of the attack, though originating in a vision, is terrifying, but Elzarian is stronger. He shakes off the pain and torpor, but alas, the one who sent the vision cannot claim the same. He is broken and exhausted. A monstrous shadow emerges from the murk of the cave. It is not real, it exists only in this strange vision or memory. But the thrill of fear it provokes is more than real. The shadow's features starkly resemble those of Discari, the terrifying demon lord. In a movement as swift as thought itself, the monster's hand is wrapped around the throat of the one they call Lariel. The foolish angel struggling on the rocks like a fly with its wings torn off intones the shadow. Its voice changes as it moves, shifting from a quiet whispering to a sonorous, a sonorous shout, becoming young, then old and quavering. Where's your goddess angel? Where's her self-assured herald? How is it that you're dying here alone so far from the light of your heaven? Gain 22 experience. Wow, that thing took out an angel like nothing. Which was Discari, right? A strange calm envelops the thought of the one called Lario. Or Lario. He recognizes who stands before him and he knows he will never bow down before this enemy. The flaming sword flares to life in his hand, bright, pure, flickering, with multicolored sparks like a sunbeam through stained glass. Slash. The blade slices through the demonic creature's flesh and the monster recoils with a howl, releasing his grip on Lario's throat. The angel falls back heavily on the rocks. His vitality is ebbing, but his pride remains undiminished. He grips his sword and with his last burst of strength plunges it into the rock. Alzarian senses that the vision is fading, the rush of thoughts diminishing like a river running dry. The last thing he hears is this. You will kill me, monster. This I know, but one day someone will come here and raise up my sword. They will raise it up and... Punish evildoers and traitors? No, save and protect the innocent. The vision disappears, vanishing in a burst of colors. Alzarian does not hear the final words, but he seems to complete the thought, taking it to heart. The words fly from his lips and with them, something else. 
The heat blazing in Alzarian's chest fades away. The edges of the scarlet wound close, leaving not even a scar behind. Looking down, Alzarian sees the flaming sword in his hand, or rather its outline, the memory of what the sword looked like. With a final surge of warm and soothing light, the sword vanishes and the light is drawn into his hand. Alzarian senses that it will return. All he needs to do is call it. What, son? What's going on? Hey, are you all right? You were kind of glowing just now. I think the uh, horse is throwing things off, like Sela kneels before the light, offering up a prayer to Ioma Day. Oh no, that's me right there. No, I'm on the horse. That, that was it. The light of heaven. But how? Land looks at you dumbfounded, gain 125 XP. What did you do with it? Where did it go? When Duog frowns, um... You saw it too? The traitors, the dying girl? No, I think I saw the memories of Lariel, the angel who died here. Lariel? Lariel. That really was Lariel? The angel from the legends. The ancestors even got his name right on the gravestone. <laughs> the chief will be thrilled. Nice. You. Thousands of gongs and no one's been able to touch it. And now you, an ordinary creature of flesh and blood no different to us, get the sword and start talking about visions. When do I watch as you with suspicion? Sorry if I keep bumping the mic, guys. I have to find a better way to, to wear this headset. Um, continue. Now, now, Wentuag, don't be a sore loser. <laughs> he is clearly different from us. The sword appeared before him, along with the angel's name and all that other stuff. Because he doesn't carry our mongrel taint. Heaven doesn't give a damn how special we are. We're born with evil inside us. Heaven doesn't need to know any more than that. Huh. Land nods towards you. I know you're willing to tear anyone apart to uphold our people's honor, but... You and Sul, you just refuse to face the truth. We are the way we are because our ancestors' bodies were corrupted by the Abyss. It does the same thing to plants and animals. There's nothing heroic or special about it. It doesn't make us better, and it doesn't make us worthier. You saw it um, requires angel mythic path. Reveal the light of heaven. It seems I can control it. You saw it too, the traitors, the dying girl. It's only us here. Your group, you, me, Wendu, and the light of heaven that sort of got... Uh, Sucked into you? <laughs> Any chance you can whip it out again? We do kind of need it. Land looks around. Sorry, I crack jokes when I get nervous. And when I'm upset. And when I'm happy. <laughs> A anyway, what I said, it came out wrong. We need to bring you to Chief Sull. You can show everyone the light of heaven, we'll rally the tribe, and go into the maze, and we'll get back our kin. Cool. Lin rubs his chin anxiously. And what if he can't make it happen a second time? What then? The tribe will just say we're crazy and turn its back on us. Okay, I guess we're getting an angel mythic path. It seems I can control it. <laughs> that is just... Wow, I mean, that's amazing! Heaven has truly blessed you. Elzerian. <laughs> this power is the most majestic thing I've ever seen in all my life. Is this what the sun is like, Lan? Oh, when Duog stares at the divine light as if transfixed. Yes, it's similar. But this light is more... Golden? Chief Sol needs to see this. 
Now that we have the power of angels on our side, he can't say no. He'll have to assemble a troop to storm the maze. You Uplanders care about your kids, right? Help us save ours. Without them, we won't survive. And then, the perils of the maze won't be so bad if we go together. We'll make our way through it and find the way to Canabras. Lon drags his gaze away from it and then looks at you pleadingly. Um, lead us here, Chief, and I'll decide if I'm going to help you or not. Let's go. We'll take the short route. Well, the only route, really. Oh no. No, I want to explore more. Oh, it's going to let me. It's going to let what me. What do we have here? Nice. But I think it's time to save, guys. We are, like, probably really long in. My laptop is getting so hot. We're an hour in. I don't know. I don't know. I've been told by... Well, I've read that some people say my temperatures are normal because it's a 4090 and it has like, you know, a bunch of high power components. I don't know. But anyway, uh, it is what it is. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you are enjoying and you'd like to see more, go ahead and hit the like button leave or leave me a comment. Both of those things or either of those things lets me know that you want to see more and then thus more will get made. Uh, but more is definitely getting made anyway, guys, if my laptop doesn't blow up. This game is awesome thus far. Very cool. So I hope you are digging it and hope you'll join me next time. If you're new here, by the way, I invite you to subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you'd like. That will just make it so you don't miss any uploads. But any of those things, guys, are just suggestions. So make of them what you will. That said, guys, until next time, be well, live well, stay well, and much love, peace, and joy. As I said... Uh, I hope you'll join me for what is already quite the epic uh, Let's Try so far. See you guys then.